always remember, the flash of an atomic bomb can come at any time, no matter where you may be. You know the places marked with the S sign? They're safe places to go when you hear the alarm. Fallout shelters. They were the places where you could hide from the blast and the radiation. We need a shot of him. George Romero remembers what it was like growing up in those days in an apartment in the East Bronx of New York City. He learned to trust the fallout shelters and to fear the sky, which contained giant Air Force bombers like the Flying Wing. We used to get in our neighborhood about a six-inch little strip of sky, and every once in a while a Flying Wing would fly over. And we used to believe that they were carrying out a bomb. So it's the same thing that kids today are worried about, basically. <laughs> That shadow hanging over him helped trigger fears and fantasies. But instead of running from them, George pursued the nightmares of his imagination. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! They're coming for you, Barbara. He tamed them and trained them. And when they were ready in 1968... Look! There comes one of them now! He pushed them through a camera onto an unsuspecting world in his first film titled Night of the Living Dead. Oh, no! oh, I tried to make films as a teenager but never believed it was something that, that I could ever achieve. It was something that was done by elves out in Hollywood, you know. I, I thought it was an unattainable goal. But he still gave it a shot, and he saw his Night of the Living Dead become a cult classic that made millions. So he set up shop as a filmmaker in Pittsburgh, and soon the sequel, Dawn of the Dead, crept across the silver screen. She's got to stand right under this thing. By now, at age 44, George Romero has produced, written, and directed nine films. He is recognized worldwide as the master of the horror film, and if he wanted, could move to Hollywood. Instead, he prefers to work right here in Pennsylvania, making relatively low-budget pictures his way. And now, he and his production crew have set up shop underground in Wampum, PA, outside of Pittsburgh. This used to be a limestone mine, but now it is used for storage, office space, and the making of George's latest gruesome epic. When we found this place, we just knew that it was exactly the right setting. Uh, it's like Dracula's caves. It was really like we found, you know, the entrance to hell or something. It really looks, looks beautiful on film. 80 Baker, take one. Okay, here we go. Action. This is the third in a series of films um, dealing with zombies. The dead are coming back to life and attacking the living. And this is the third in a series of films. The first was Night of the Living Dead, and then there was Dawn of the Dead, and this is Day of the Dead, possibly to be followed by brunch or uh, whatever else might come up. Brunch for a zombie is a living person, which keeps the humans hopping in Day of the Dead. It keeps the special effects department mighty busy as well, on a set where the director is always calling for more gore. But special effects wizard Tom Savini is glad to oblige. He has lots of gory tricks up his sleeve. Here he explains a cute little number that he fondly calls pop top. This is a mechanical device here. It's a rubber thing with eyeballs and that move around. It's remote control. But it's actually this guy. It's his chopped off head in, in the finished film, you know. Um, people love to be scared. Here, Tom explains how pop top will perform by using what is called a storyboard. You'll see the actor wielding the shovel, crashing down at him, a real shovel. 
But then we cut away, of course, to a reaction of blood splattering or something. When we cut back, it's a cutaway shovel. It looks like it's in the real actor. So the real actor can, can emote and stuff. You know, it's not a fake head. You can study it for a long time. We'll pump the blood out of the shovel. We cut away again, or to a different shot, of um, a fake head that the shovel has already pierced through and it lobbed the top of the head off and we see the top of the head go rolling down a corridor. Yeah. That's another fake head. Mm -hmm. So then we stop with this thing just turning into the camera upside down and as people walk by it, since it's still alive, it'll look left and right, you know, as the feet pass by. So a little comedy bit among all this uh, disaster. And now the result of this effort. If you're squeamish, you may want to close your eyes. Here is Pop Top in action. Yes, that's certainly disgusting. You can open your eyes now. But imagine if you're the guy who was the original model for Pop Top, or if you were his mom. Tom let me take it home over Thanksgiving, and I called my mom into the room and said, hey, Mom, come here, check this out. And I hid behind the bed, put the head on the bed, pulled all the cables back. She walks in and just going, uh, uh, looking around and stuff. She wouldn't speak. It was Thanksgiving Day. She wouldn't even speak to me the rest of the day. She just shook her head. She's like, look what Savini did to you. You never know how your kid's going to turn out. In the case of actress Debbie Carter, she is not so sure she wants her mom to know. Not after she has checked out her zombie makeover in the mirror. I started laughing. I, I mean, I was horrified as well. I had a picture taken so I could send home to my mother, but I, I don't think I will. I really don't. I think she'll be scared. It is strange. That desire to willingly become something as utterly loathsome as a zombie. I can't understand it myself. But if you have something crawling deep inside of you that needs expressing, then let me introduce you to makeup artist Mike Tursick. All of us have been working incredibly hard doing zombies. You know, some days we'll have like 150 zombies to do. You might think all you need to make a horror film is plenty of special effects, creepy costumes, and a good makeup artist. Well, you do need those. But in addition, you gotta have a good script and good actors to read the lines. That's where Lori Cardell comes in. She is from Pittsburgh, but George discovered her starring in an off-Broadway play. Now she has the lead female role in Day of the Dead. I've made a big transition here, I think, as far as doing this part, and that is just letting it all hang out, not caring about how one looks, and just getting so into the part. It's such a liberating feeling. A.D. David, take one. Margaret, I didn't hear something. Okay, action. They try the scene again. And again. Wait. And again, it's not easy trying to get just the right touch of horror in a horror film. It's a very, very complicated process making a movie. You don't just sort of run in with a camera and shoot. Talk about shooting. You go to a George Romero film, you want to see what the bullets do, right? Well... What each bullet does is create a lot of work for Steve Kershaw, demolition expert for the special effects department. Here he demonstrates his craft with a trusting member of our primetime crew, Tom Upton. Each bullet requires a bag of fake blood, an explosive charge, a shield to protect the body against that charge, and the electronics to precisely choreograph the gore. Think of all the work involved. The next time you see someone charge across the screen, spraying bullets. Now that the mayhem is over, consider another filmmaking fact of life. The waiting between takes. Deep underground, where the sun don't shine, and where the limestone dust gets into your lungs, into your very bones. Gee, what's it like being in showbiz? It's like not in The Exorcist where they had to film. I heard in the room they had to make the temperature really cold. This is real. <laughs> but it's all done for a worthy cause. That is to frighten us half to death. Which Romero, the fright doctor, thinks is something we all crave. In terms of 
why are people attracted to fantasy or to horror tales? I think they just always have been. I think there's a lot of fear in all of us. We don't know what it's all about. We don't know where we're going to go when we leave this place. And even as the editing continues for the July 85 release of Day of the Dead, George Romero is hard at work planning his next film. No doubt he is planning something totally outrageous, something that will go beyond the bounds of good taste, that could only be described as a prime time horror. Speaking of horror, I meant to ask George what scares him. Oh boy, I, I bet the guy's really scared to death of zombies. I'm, I'm kind of afraid of the atom bombs. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.